Okay, I am having a rough time, but we are back and trying to get back into soap. Um, this episode is going to be a little different because I'm not going to be crocheting in this episode. I'm playing a game on my other phone. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've kind of fallen into a depression obsession, and there's only one more day left of the tournament, so I'm still trying to trying to play. So I'm in rank 15 right now, which is pretty pathetic and only for people who really have no life. But that's what happens when I get sad. I just lock into a dark room and play a video game obsessively. So here we are. Um, but for now, we're watching Soap. And I'm trying to remember what happened in the last video and I'm having trouble. I know that Jessica has been kidnapped. Not really. She let the guy go and kind of joined him. So it's not... I don't know. Um, Jody is still looking for Wendy, who has been kidnapped. It's a lot of kidnapping. There's a lot going on. This is the story of two sisters. Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is so This is Ben. And this is coffee. And this is a phone. Sorry. One of those nights. <laughs> Why is my camera yeah, like fuzzing? Filthy, I like a really filthy girl. Fine. My name's Mr. Phil. I'll be your host for the evening. Oh, hi. Great. I say, uh, my name is Burr. Yeah, I like a girl. Kind of, my ball. kind of a girl. Filthy, I like a really filthy girl. Fine. My name's Mr. Phil. I'll be your host for the evening. Oh, hi. Great. I say, uh, my name is Bubba. 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 Bubba Brown. Fit as a fiddle and ready for, you know. Will this be cash or charge? We accept all major credit cards, Mr. Brown. Are you kidding? Well, we don't take Chevron, but most anything else will do. Oh, that's good to know. That's really like good to know. No, I'll go with a lot of cash. <laughs> Let's see what I have. Uh, how about room four? A lovely room. Does it have a view? Yes. Oh, uh, that's too lovely. No view. They're all the same price. Okay, fine. I'll have a dark room, a filthy girl, and no view. How about room one? Sounds good. Room one. Right over there. Great. It's ready right now. Great, great. That is ready, because I hate waiting around for lust and dirt. Well, enjoy. Yeah, well, great. Uh, I'm just going to... Uh... Wait here for a second. I got a friend coming in here. We don't allow that. Only one to a room. Good to know. Just good to know. Only one to a room. I wouldn't even be here. That's too filthy. No, I'm just, uh, let me just sit here and kind of absorb how glad I am I'm here. No. I'm so lost on what they're doing. ridiculous outfit I ever saw. I can't believe you walked around like that. Give me a little credit, will ya? I drove. <laughs> drove what? Oh, the, uh, the patrol girl. <laughs> what? The patrol
patrol car. <laughs> the patrol <laughs> I can't believe that you drove around in a patrol car dressed like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> I didn't drive it, Bert. I rode in the back seat. Chuck and Bob drove. <laughs> oh, that's much better. Which Excuse one, me. Chuck or Bob? But, uh, just exactly what did you have in mind? Ah, uh, hello, Toyota, uh, Kawasaki, uh, Canon 81. <laughs> now listen, uh, give my friend a dark room and an uh, ugly girl and no view. <laughs> room two, your friend's in room one. Are they connected? Why? To you? <laughs> With a snub, we'll take it, though. Thanks a lot. Give me two. Now listen, we meet at Clancy's bar in an hour. Jeez, I don't know about this, Bert. I'm pretty nervous. This is a whole new bag of bananas for me. Please, you're a cop. You have to have nerves of ice. Ah. No emotion. Cold steam. All right. Ready, big fella? <laughs> Bert was not ready. Danny's done forgot his accent. Hello. Oh, there he is again. Hello. First five minutes is 20 bucks extra. Second five is 30 more. 10 per minute after that. Take off your clothes, assembly devices, if that's your inclination. Lie down, shut up, and no smoking. Boy. Boot camp was easier than this. If you are a member of the police department, please state so now. Otherwise, you are committing entrapment, which is illegal, unethical, and may I say, off the record, tacky. tacky. I'm a deputy sheriff. Welcome to Headley House. Headley House was built in 1903 and was the third building constructed in Dunn's River. That's our tour for today. Thank you and good evening. Wait, wait. I'm not here to arrest you. I just want to show you some pictures. Hey, I'm not into that. <laughs> but uh, it's your money, you know? Oh, no, it's not what you think. These are pictures of me and Sheriff Campbell in garter belts. <laughs> Did you say garter belts? Yeah. As a matter of fact, Sheriff Campbell's in the next room interrogating a woman this very second. Going well. It sounds like a happy man. Do you know a man named Tibbs? 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 No. Uh-uh. No, never heard of him. Tibbs. Ooh, doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Wow, look at the time. Hey, just uh, hold on here, huh? You see, uh, me and the sheriff are... Well, there's the sheriff there. And that's me. And that's you. And this is... I don't know who that is, but... Uh... Hey! Well, thanks a lot for dropping by with these, but I gotta run. Wait a minute! It's you! Uh, look, uh, it's late, and I'm a candy striper at the VA hospital. I found you! Hey, Bert! Bert, I found her! <laughs> Look, William, I didn't know you guys were cops. I don't care about that. He told us it was a photo layout for psychology today. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I was set up. So were we. I thought you guys were actors, you know, models. Ah, oh, Tibbs drugged us. We were unconscious. No wonder you didn't respond. You just laid there smiling like a sleeping Scientologist. <laughs> Tibbs is blackmailing us with those. Please, will you help us? Do what? Put him behind bars. I can't. Why not? I just can't. Tibbs is like a father to me. If he knew that I squealed, he'd kill me. Some father? I didn't say he was Robert Young. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Death, pain and death. Look, Ballad. uh... Gwen. Look, Gwen. You help me put him away, and I'll see to it that he never bothers you again. It wouldn't work. He owns me. He owns all of us. That's ridiculous. People can't own other people. Oh, yeah? Well, he owns me. He's owned me ever since I was 14. Help me put him away. Free yourself. It can't be done. You can't do it. He owns you, too. 
No one owns me, and no one will ever, because I say so. Now, he may beat us with this thing. I may end up the laughing stock of this town, but no two-bit little pimp is ever going to own me. That was beautiful. <laughs> Stupid, but beautiful. <laughs> Sorry I wasted your time. Hey, look, I really feel for you. I just don't know what I could do. Come to the office tomorrow at noon and make it this dipso... Deposition. Right. <laughs> Tibbs would shoot me on sight ten seconds after I left your office. I'll give you complete protection round the clock. Look, Gwen, it's no concern of mine how somebody makes a living as long as they don't hurt anybody doing it. So, how is he going to offer round-the-clock protection when the sheriff's department seems to be just him and Bert? Are, are they planning to move this prostitute in the house with them? Like, that's not something he can promise. At this point, this sheriff's office can't even gain custody back of a child when the father has just won it in court. They're still saying, no, we can't do anything, it's the mother this jurisdiction seems to be able to do nothing. How does he think he's going to be able to keep this woman safe? And wasn't Danny in the mob? How is he this naive about how difficult it is to keep somebody in this position safe? Like, I know he's an idiot, but he literally worked with the type of people who would ensure that she could not be safe. So this is beyond idiot. It's egotistical, which is the worst kind of idiot. But this guy hurts people, lots of people. Please testify. No. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, um... Uh, Danny. Danny? Oh, uh, would you, uh, like a... Uh, you, you still have a few minutes left. I could give you a massage. A real one. <laughs> if you'd like. Uh, no. No, uh... I, uh, I better go tell Sheriff Campbell the good news. <laughs> On second thought, maybe I better just wait in the lobby. <laughs> Hello. I'd laugh at how bad his disguises were, but he doesn't look like himself. So they're not, they are doing the job. But he doesn't look like anybody who would actually walk around in public either. So. Our chili needs more meat. I know, but we can't afford any more. Mm -hmm. oh, that's too hot. I'm gonna put some sour cream in it. Don't touch my chili! <laughs> my chili. Well, I like it. Since when is it my chili? I can remember when it was our chili. All right, our chili. But our chili is perfect, so don't... That makes me laugh because men aren't known for cooking very much. But when they do cook, they usually will have one or two items that they are very good at. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, one of Dutch's items is chili. Mess it up. That's why most guys what like to barbecue because it's the one thing they're really good at. Chili dogs at the Cordon Bleu. Saunters, why are you using our good china at an outdoor barbecue? Because you can't afford paper plates. <laughs> Daddy, why do we have to eat outside anyway, like peasants? I'm afraid that's what we are, Princess. We've run out of money. But Mother has money just sitting in a bank or somewhere. That's right, but only she can withdraw it, and she's being held prisoner in some junk. Makes it a little tough to get to the bank. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There must be some way to get money. There is 
is an extreme method that both have been known to use. It's called twerking. Mm, ludicrous. I think I want to work Saunders, to earn my daily bread by the sweat of my brow, to work and toil like all the little common men across this great land of ours. But I'm an ex-con. No one will hire me. How fortunate. And then they took this concept and made Shit's Creek. And for you. The men appreciate you coming out to the field, Cookie. <laughs> We're tired of K-rations. Hey, it's the least Cookie. I can do for the boys at the front, Major. Uh, carry on. <laughs> What is he Try doing with those tongs? No, thank you. I'll dine out. What have been paid in two weeks? Oh, I'm judicious with money. I have a tidy sum set by. Really? <laughs> Saunders? Yes? I was wondering. See, that we're in a spot here, and uh, I was wondering if they... Well, you, you know what I mean. No, I don't. Clarify yourself. <laughs> well, I was wondering if you could lend us some money. Excuse me while I consider your request. Not to mess with his chili. He's over. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I came at a bad time. I didn't mean to interrupt your barbecue. Leslie. Hi. We haven't met. I'm Annie. That's Leslie, the young woman who's trying to kill my son. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Are you a relative? No, a tramp. <laughs> show Bob in which she needs to explain her plan and how much thought she put into it. And her plan was just a snake. Well, once again, I'm sorry for bothering you. That she's See leaving. You soon. And don't try to follow me. I've got a gun and a hand grenade. <laughs> oh, Bert, she was just here. She was. Quick.
Tristan didn't even dance. Sometimes it takes a minute or so before you realize you've actually been shot. I had an uncle, a little bit of a sidebar, I had an uncle that accidentally shot himself. He had just recently gotten this gun and it was in the glove box of the car and I guess he was showing it to the other men in the family. And the next thing the women in the family knew he had come in and said he had shot himself. Very calmly. <laughs> Just another day for these men. He was fine. But he had shot himself. <laughs> next love interest? think I could do that. <laughs> no, Jessica, you don't, don't. Please don't misunderstand. It's just that I, 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 I worry about you. I stay up all night thinking about you in the tent alone with the mosquitoes and the Gila monsters and the... Monsters? <laughs> you mean you have monsters here? Jessica. <laughs> please stay with me tonight. This could be our last night together. pause real quick because I need more coffee. We're going to push through and do two episodes. So I'm going to go ahead and refill my coffee now. Okay, we are back. Hopefully. I have a coffee pot now, so it's much quicker. Here we are. It's starting to taste fun. I let that one go a little too long. Now I... I just... fluff up your pillows and everything is perfect. Uh, I... Would you like another blanket? No, no, no blanket. No blanket. I, uh... well, what about a book to read? Ah, yes, yes. Here we have El Mundo en la Opinión de Carp. <laughs> well, uh... If there's anything that you need or want, I... I'll be right over here. Yeah. Huh? 
They were going to ball. Well, you see, I thought we were going to share this tent. Yes, we are. I'll be right over here. Uh, yeah. What I meant was, when you said that you wanted me in your tent, I thought that you meant you wanted me in your tent. Oh, you me or no, no, never. You, my, my Madonna? No, no, no. No, no. Lady Federales, amputate my hands if ever I dare to touch. No, 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 no. Never, my Jessica, never. Ever? <laughs> but until we marry. <laughs> not American. Criminal or not, he has morals, I guess. Now that Danny's found a hooker who will testify against Tibbs, will she be afraid to open her mouth? Now that Jessica found out the revolution may last 72 years, will she have her charge account switched? Now that the tates are out of cash, will Chester sell his sweaters? Will Billy ever find Jessica? Will anyone ever find Billy? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of Soap. Okay, so that was season four, episode six. We're going to move forward and just go ahead right into season four, episode seven. We're just going to do two in this one. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is so. Oh, we need a last name. As a family, friend and I don't have a surname. We haven't made one up yet.
await the inevitable. Hell, I am surprised at you. Are you waiting to be killed? You should be staying alive and going on. Those people took your land away from you. Crummy, no? It's downright rude, El. You cannot give up. You have something to believe in. You have a dream, El. How many people in this world do you know that still believe in something, that still have a dream? You are a very special person. Don't you know that? I say we fight. You come home with me. You come to Connecticut, America, and we'll fight the revolution from my house. She wish you know nobody's ever said that to me before. <laughs> you are wonderful, right? and of course you're right. El Puerco cannot die. El Puerco must live and fight so that others may die. <laughs> one, one. Get your comrades one, two, and one, three, and tell them to pack up. We are going to Connecticut, America. How do we get there, old great pig? <laughs> we'll take two boats. One, two, and one, three. We'll go in one boat with you, one, one. Yes. Yes? No, no, you and I will take another boat. It will not be pleasant. We will be freezing by night and boiling by day. The sun will crack your skin and your hair is going to look like hell. <laughs> we may be shot and we may be eaten up by sharks, but we will try. You have given me renewed hope, red-haired one. Yes. I will get you to Connecticut America safe and sound, or you will die trying. <laughs> Maybe I said too much. Now, you've, uh, you've been employed by this Mr. Tibbs ever since, is that correct? Yeah. In what capacity? A uh hooker. -huh. Oh. <laughs> what I'm trying to determine for the record is what it is exactly that you do. I sell my body to men for money. Oh! I'm terribly sorry. I'm really sorry. Actually, look, uh, Mr. Mr. D.A., Assistant D.A. Rollins. Yeah, the uh, D.A. has a mustache. Oh, great. Listen, Mr. Assistant here, if you're finished, uh, we got a lot of work right? we got to do. Yeah, I, I think we have just about everything we need. Woof! <laughs> I'm uh, going to make my report to the D.A., and we'll issue a warrant for Tibbs' arrest. All right, All right. that's it, that's it. <laughs> uh, what about Gwen? You and the uh, sheriff take care of that, okay? All right, good, thanks. All right, uh, we'll see you guys upstairs. Tell the DA I'm on the way, right? When? Uh, <laughs> thanks. I should be in a home. <laughs> Look, Danny, but I'm going to go see the real DA. Right, the one with the mustache. That's right, the guy with the stash. All right, listen, when? Thank you. Oh, no, don't thank me. You've been real nice. Thank you. Thank you. And you, thank you. Thank you. But don't thank me. Thank you. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You solved it here, so thank you. Thank you. But it's her. Thank her. I did, didn't I? I don't know, but thank you for asking. <laughs> thank you. No, no, you, uh, you still didn't say thank you for the first thing you were supposed to say thank you for. I've been thanked. Thank you. <laughs> you sure I did. Listen, all right, I'll see you in a little while. Goodbye, and, uh... Well, that's that. Did I do okay? You did great. I'm proud of you. Really? Nobody's ever been proud of me before. Are you scared? Yeah. Well, one thing you should know about Deputy Dan. <laughs> so what he says he'll protect and serve... He means to protect and serve. A promise is a promise, Gwen, so don't worry. Really. Now, let's find you a place to live. Danny? Yeah? I just want to say that I, I think you're the most... Well, thank you. 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 We're looping. It's a loop of gratitude, but it's a loop. Who's the menacing shadow? Is it friend?
still a fugitive of the law? They escaped prison. Wouldn't somebody still be looking for Dutch? How is he getting a job? Like a legitimate job. Fair the Tate's the public dome. Where do we apply? Unless they talked about that and I forgot, but at this point it's like, oh, you escaped, you're free. The butler answers the telephone for the gardener. <laughs> Take furniture clearance. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's the state department. Yes. I see. It's about mother. Oh, my God. Honey, what is it? Honey, what is it? You ask, what is it? You've got the nerve to ask, what is it? Daddy, what is it? <laughs> the government sent a plane into Malaguay, and they discovered the rebel camp. Oh, that's wonderful. However, there's no sign of your mother. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> but they did discover a few strands of red hair in a tent. Well, that's it wonderful. On El Puerco's pillow. Oh, Daddy, now don't be depressed. They're going to find Mother. Don't be depressed. Your mother is shedding somewhere in the jungle. I can't be depressed. Shedding. I, I, I think that there's a good chance that she may be alive. Oh, that's wonderful. Or she may have been captured by the communists and executed. Oh, my God. That's sad. Don't shut it off. Uh, okay. Thank, thank. Gosh. What about Billy? Do they have any news about Billy? Yes. No one has seen him or heard from him. They have no idea whether he's dead or alive. They have no clues to work on as to his whereabouts. Well, then everything's not completely hopeless, right? <laughs> oh, Jesse. My whole family. My son is missing. 
My wife has run off with sorrow. <laughs> Does he really care about Jessica, or is he caring because Jessica has access to the bank accounts and he doesn't? Because he seems to care more about the financial situation right now than about Jessica, since he's already with another woman. And again, how is Dutch able to just go and get a legitimate job being a felon from the law? I know that they cleared it up Chester because they said they decided that the aneurysm was the reason that he um, committed the murder. And so his charges were dropped, I guess, because the aneurysm was fixed. But I don't remember how I don't remember them saying why. Dutch is just free to do what he wants now because he was in prison. <laughs> like, him and Chester escaped and only Chester's charges were dropped. And I, I, I might just be forgetting somebody in the comments, if you've been paying attention, explain to me how Dutch is not a fugitive of justice at this moment. Because I'm completely lost. And I have watched all four seasons up to this point. But I'm just, I don't, I, I've, I've missed it. <laughs> or my brain didn't absorb it. Because it's in the same town where Bert is the sheriff and Bert would have to report it to the feds. But he's already talking to the feds. I'm I'm just I'm very confused about the logistics of the legalities of this series right now. Saturday. Which means you're going to feel lousy all day Saturday. 
Sunday. Sunday, 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 Sunday sounds good. Sunday good for you? I think so. <laughs> Unless, of course, the baby Meh. gets colicky. Meh. What? Now. <laughs> no. No. All right, I'll take a bath. I don't care. I like you dirty. <laughs> Jody again? You sure this is a good idea? What could happen? <laughs> okay, fine, I've seen enough. <laughs> Come on, they're just blowing off a little steam. Steam? That's a little steam? You can heat Montreal on that steam. <laughs> now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have come all of this way. Now, let's just flash Carol's picture around a little bit and see if anybody recognizes her, okay? Act natural. Cut a bar.
last I heard, she went off at the Farley Circus. When was that? Week and a half ago. Week and a half ago. Let's see. Farley, far, Farley. That means by now she'd be in Lompoc. Lompoc? We have to go to Lompoc? Is there actually a place called Lompoc? <laughs> Give me a dollar. Hey, little partner. Uh, excuse me, could you open it, please? Why is this filthy glass? I'm pretty sure Charlie Daniels stumbled into that place at one point with his car had a flat tire. How did Jessica and El Puerco have decided to escape the enemy by boat? Will they remember to bring along the Dramamine? Next time Jody and Maggie get a lead on Wendy, will they remember to make reservations in advance? Will Eunice ever get along with Annie? Will Billy ever find his mother? And who is spying on Gwen and Danny? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of So. Okay, so we finally got two more episodes in the can for Soap, Seasons 4, uh, Episodes 6 and 7. I think there's only 22 episodes in the season, and then that's it for the whole series. Unfortunately, um, Soap never even got a, a real finale, so after this season, we're going to be done with it. Which is a shame, because I am enjoying the show. It's getting a little bit wonky, and I don't understand some of the logistics, but it's still decent, you know. And the bits with Billy Crystal in the bar kept making me think of City Slickers. So that was amusing as well. I'm pretty sure they used a couple of the jokes in City Slickers. <laughs> <laughs> 